Hello friends. So yes, we have survived 100 days in Ark. And a lot of you asked for 200 days. So here it is. Okay, so we are back in our Ark Survival Evolved adventure. And today is actually day 101. Now let me explain. <laughs> day 98 to day 100 I used in order to make the thumbnails. Just so you know. So we're starting on day 101. Let's go. Now, since the goal in this video is to be able to defeat all the alpha bosses, we need to upgrade and we need to make everything better. So we're now looking for a new base location. The first place that I spot is this little cliff area. To me, it seems nice and flat. And to the left of us, we have redwoods and we know there's good metal up there. And to the right of us, we have the volcano, which is where the overseer is. It seems to be quite central for all the obelisks as well. But if dinos fall off the cliff and go in the water, they'll probably die. And that's not good for our game. Yeah, so now. So I continue to hunt, but then I find this location and it's absolutely perfect. I mean, who doesn't want to live on the beach? So we're really close to the blue obelisk and then the red obelisk isn't too far at all. Sure, the green obelisk is a little bit far, but we already have half a base set up there anyway, which we could basically use as an outpost. Now that we're back at base, I wanted to gather a few things. And the first thing I wanted to create so we could take to our new base was an industrial forge. When I checked what we needed, we only really needed some oil and some polymer we already had all the metal in the forges so we head straight out on our frog to get some oil then we head out on our rg and our anki to get some obsidian to make polymer day 102 we finally have enough materials to make our industrial forge i then go ahead and grab a vault for storage our t-rex for safety and jump on our bird so we can fly on over to our new base we start to gather some materials so we can lay down our foundations for our brand new base in this 200 days i have actually added a mod and this mod is the structures s plus mod now i made sure i put this mod in there so it doesn't help us with the gameplay but it just makes the building a little bit more easier and aesthetically pleasing because as you can see we can stack foundations on top of each other now Um, so because we need a crap ton of materials to be able to make this build we actually don't finish the basis of the build until day 105 so here's a quick montage all the way up until then Now we have our base foundation set out. We are going for another circle design, but this time it's much bigger. It's gonna have to be to be able to fit the industrial forge and then all the crafting stuff we need. Ah, uh, so I got a little bit bored and decided to take the Rex out for a little bit of a run and take out some dinos that were just up the ways from us. After we had a little bit of fun, we headed back to base and got back to work. First, we had to start off gathering some more materials because we were out. Then I added these two gate frames so we had easy access to the water for our water tames. And for something a little bit different for our windows, we use wood railings. Day 105 and we placed down our industrial forge and our S plus crafting station. But since now we have the industrial forge down, we have to go get some metal so we can fill it up. But as we got to the top of the mountain, I realized I've got nothing to harvest metal with. Came up all this way without a pick. So heading back to the base we go. I decided to not do a metal run anyway. I just really wanted to finish this base. And there we have it, finally, our finished product. Well, so far, we do add more stuff as we go along. Day 106, we flew back to our original base, picked up our Basiosaurus, and then flew back to our new base and dumped him straight in the water. Be free, my friend. We then placed down three artifact pedestals and then placed the artifacts straight in there. Then we finished off our crafting station. First, our smithy, then our mortar and pestle, followed by our fabricator. But then some sharks came over to see what was going on. So me and the Bessie decided to have sushi for dinner. And that night we had to admire our trophies. Damn, they look good at night. Just take it in. A little bit longer. Yeah. Day 107, we went back up the mountain to do a metal run. 
but this time we took out Anki. We got ourselves some fat metal and then headed on back down to base. I then realized if we're going to be able to take on all these bosses, we're going to need a solid breeding area. And the main part of the base just ain't going to cut it. So we're going to build a little part of it just off the side of it. But you're probably sick of watching me build just as much as I'm sick of actually building. So we're going to skip straight to the end. And that's on day 108. But yeah, that pretty much took up our whole day. So that yeah, that's that's all that happened. Oh, we did go pick up a date on there and we brought it back to base. Yeah. Day 109, we went back up the mountain, but this time we were on the hunt for crystal. And then we saw this creepy ass dead body. Is that a freaking dead body? Back at base now, we watched a T-Rex egg hatch. It was thrilling. Then we went out to go get some cementing paste from some beaver dams. But first we had to beat up these dilos and a poor raptor. We then went on to collect our cementing paste from multiple beaver dams. Then we went to the green obelisk so we could collect all the tributes that we left behind. Oof, that was a big day. Day 110, we flew back to base, but this time without a shirt on for all you ladies out there. Do ladies even watch this? And then we decided to lay down the chemistry bench. So now we can mass produce the drugs. And of course, we need to go collect some berries. But now's a perfect time for some music. Now that we have a crap ton of narco berries, it's time for us to cook up a crap ton of narcotics. Later that day, we went back up the mountain, but this time we went for obsidian because we're going to need to make a lot of polymer for the end game and obsidian makes polymer. Yeah. Day 111, we placed down a vault and we named it tributes because, well, obviously that's where we're going to put our tributes for the bosses. We then go out on a hunt for the all elusive dinosaur, the high level dodo. I swear, I couldn't find a single one. The highest level we found was this one level 84. So we do what we always do. Give him the good old slicey slicey dicey dicey. Now I know it looks harsh, but we do it because we love them. Nah, not really. We need a high level to spawn. Day 112 and we went out to find ourselves some high level dinos. And as luck would have it, we spotted a level 112 PT. So we patiently waited for the bird to land. Come on, land. Land. Get down there. No, no, what are you doing? Eventually it landed, so I bowled it and then knocked it out. While we're waiting for its hunger to go down, we spotted a level 112 RG. Now I know usually I build a trap, but this time I wanted to try and tame it without a trap. I was feeling pretty confident now that we're using a rifle rather than the crossbow. After a few shots, it started to run away, but man's aim is on point, bro. No way! Oh, no way! But it landed right on top of a raptor. <laughs> this is the worst. So I decided to turn the raptor into raptor steak. Mmm, raptor steak. Then we went to go check on our PT, and there was a freaking T Rex right by it. But this T Rex is so close. So I tried to lead it away, but when I couldn't, I had to make T Rex steak. <laughs> they call me the Rex Slayer. <laughs> I had to kill some time now, so I kind of just floated here in the air and I just admired the scenery. Just take a look. That looks pretty damn cool. Then the RG was ready to be tamed. We named him CEO because, well, the other one's called Boss. So this is CEO. Yeah. And now the PT is ready to be tamed also. And we named him Maverick. Day 113 and we spot a female level 108 Argentavis. But what makes this one extra cool is that it has orange tips on its wings. So once again, with my super duper amazing aim, I shoot it out of the sky. But when we open up its inventory, we realize the food's already low. So we can tame it straight away. So we went back to the base and then got both of our brand new RGs out so they could meet each other for the very first time because I needed them to make love. Baby, it's you. We spent the rest of the day putting all the breeding dinosaurs together. Then we collected all the fertilized eggs and then started to put them down so they can start cooking up. I meant incubating. We're not going to eat them. The morning of day 114, some of them hatched. Now, I know it looks like a lot of them, but we're really trying to get one or two that have really good stats. Having a lot of babies means you've got to go out and hunt so you can feed them. Then you've got to walk them so you can imprint them and then cuddle them so they can get imprinted as well. But we have a slight solution for this overpopulation. Close your eyes, kids. And then our T-Rex is hatched, but only one of them made the cut. So we led them away over to the side, just a little bit away from base. Then we unclaimed them. <laughs> he wants to cuddle. This is actually 
so sad. Then we brought the big T-Rex over, and I'm pretty sure you know what happened next. Early day 115, we decided to go out to the ocean so we could collect some fish meat. Then for most of the day, we just spent around the base just caring for all the babies. At the end of the day, we went for a meat run on our T-Rex. Day 116, and at this point, my 100 day video has been out for a couple days now. And then I get this comment, which basically says, for the Alpha Broodmother, use Megatheriums. They have extra damage when they kill bugs. For the Megapithecus, do the same thing you did for the Alpha Broodmother, which would be my T-Rexes. And then for the Dragon, use a Therizino Army. This is a great idea. I'ma do that. So first off, we find ourselves the level 104 Megatherium. Oh, 104. So I build a quick pillar trap, go and get our friend's attention, guide our friend into the trap, and knock him out. And while we wait for the Megatherium to be ready to be tamed, we went out and we found this Therizino, but it's only a level eight. So I killed it. Day 117 and our Megatherium was ready to be tamed. Then we went back on the hunt to be able to find ourselves either a breathing Megatherium or any high level Therizino. We did come up empty handed, but on day 118, we did find this level 92 Therizino. So I chased it down when it decided to run and calmly put her to sleep. Day 119 and I flew back to base so I could feed all of our dinos and then stock up on narcotics. I needed to fly back to our Therizino as fast as I could because their topor drains really quickly. Now that we have that under control, I went out to find more dinosaurs and we spotted these two mating pair Megatheriums. So I threw together a quick pillar trap, put one of the Megatheriums to bed, built a second pillar trap and sung a quick lullaby to our other friend. We call it Go to Sleep Megatherium. Yeah. Go to sleep, Megatherium. Go to sleep, Megatherium. Yeah, I I'm not a singer. Anyway, when that went down, we had to race straight back to our Therizino because I was worried that it was going to wake up. The rest of the day through to the night, we just kept tending to our Therizino. And then it was day 120 and the Therizino was ready to be tamed. But just before it was about to hit 100%, we got attacked by these child, ch ch I don't know what the freak they're called. But just in the nick of time, our Therizino came out and backed us up. It was light work for our girl. So we put her in a cryopod and then took her back to base. But on the way back to base, I was flying a little bit low and this happened. No, no way. Oh, I got done by a scare. Slight inconvenience, but it was okay in the end. Oh, and I almost forgot about my two Megatheriums. <laughs> Both were ready to be tamed. When this one got up, we named him Peanut Butter. And when the second one woke up, we didn't name her at all. When we got back to base, we got straight to breeding. And this is kind of what it looks like. But I'll let David Attenborough explain how it works. Evening falls on the lush grasslands as the humble Megatherium gently mounts his chosen mate and in a dance as old as time itself it rears its head and emits the mighty mating call <laughs> later that day we named our baryonyx indiana jones because he's going to be the one that goes in and out of caves all the time i thought it was pretty creative Day 121 and I spent most of the day building a platform on the other side of the base so we could place down some crop pots. We're going to need some of these veggies in order to be able to cook some stuff up later. Later that night we went into the easy cave so we could try and find ourselves a dung beetle. We came out empty handed but it was also day 122. So I decided to fly around to all the obelisks to see what tributes we needed. Starting with the green obelisk. This boss is the broodmother and I'm pretty sure we have all the tributes back at base anyway. Then we went to the red obby. We might have some Tyrannosaurus arms, and I know we have at least eight Tuso tentacles from the last video, but the rest should be pretty easy to get. Now the blue orby, most of these were pretty easy to get. We already have all the artifacts. We just need to get some more Megalania toxins and their Stylocolia claws, but the Spinosail should be pretty easy. Then we left and headed back to base, but on our way we spotted a Giga, and we know we need to collect two Giga hearts for the Alpha Dragon. And since this one's only a level 8, it should be pretty easy to take down. So I flew back to base to collect one of our high level Rexes, then returned to take on our biggest foe yet. Oh. It was at this moment that I realized, even though I was doing a lot of damage, he was taking a hit and not getting bloody at all yet. 
And then I realized up in the corner, my health was going down quite quickly. Holy crap. I don't know if I'm going to survive. I don't think I'm going to. Basically from here, I knew it was all over. It was at this very moment I had to make a decision. Do I take my sword out and try and fight it one-on-one? -on -one? Do I whistle my PT? Or do I make a run for it and try and save my ass? Looks like I gotta try and save my ass. I think I'm dead. I'm pretty sure I'm dead. Holy crap. Oh no, oh no, 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 no! I honestly can't believe I survived that fall. But thankfully, it looks like the gig has been distracted. Wow, I went into that way too confident. So now the goal is to make it back to base without freezing our ass off. To make things worse, we are in a very dangerous place and it's about to become nighttime. Our health was dropping really fast and we had a broken leg by now. But then I had a brilliant idea. If I can build a campfire and some fires around us, it might be able to warm us up until at least the morning and we can regenerate some health and possibly cook some meat. So I get the campfire out, I place it down, I go to light it and... Look, I know usually in a hardcore survival, we would end it here, but I just can't do it. I'm not gonna let you down like that. I will complete the goals we set for ourselves. I will defeat all the alpha bosses. So let's get back to it. Day 123, we get back to base and we hang our head in shame. But there's only one thing we can do. Jump on our PT and fly back to our body to collect all of our stuff. Once we have all our stuff, we fly back to our PT, pick him up and then make our way home. But on our way, we check to see if we can still spot the Giga. Turns out I couldn't find him anywhere. Once we arrived back at base, I figured it was time for a change of scenery. So to the ocean we go. This time we're on the hunt for Basilosaurus Blubber, which we need for tributes for one of the bosses. We take down a few of these Basilosauruses and gain the tributes that we need. And then we see this Alpha Legis, this thing, which we leave alone, but I didn't realize I actually need something for that as a tribute for the Overseer. Just around the bend, we spot this sparkling little dinosaur thing, the Leopleurodon. It was kind of cool, but once again, I checked down in the corner on my health and realized I'm losing a lot of health because I'm freezing. So I rush straight to the surface and try and figure out where I am and head straight on into land. Once I got to land, I quickly built a campfire and some torches to keep myself warm and then just started to wait out the night. It got dark, real dark. Holy crap. But I could also hear dinosaurs in the distance. It was super creepy. Oh, that sounds close. But then this happened. Uh oh, what was that? we had finally escaped but i realized it was warmer if we were actually under the water although we still kept losing health from the cold and i may or may not have forgotten about one very important thing about being under the water I can't actually breathe underwater. Day 124 and we returned from retrieving our body from a very shameful, shameful death. And most of the day we hung out around the base because it seems to be the safest place for us right now. But when we grew some balls, we left and we went to the volcano so we could check to see what tributes we need for the Alpha Overseer. So we're going to need the Alpha Broodmother Trophy, the Alpha Carnotaurus Arm. Oh, I've got one of them. An Alpha Dragon Trophy, Alpha Leech Blubber. That's what I needed from before. Alpha Megalodon Fin, pretty sure I already got that. Alpha Megatherius Trophy, gonna need to get that. Alpha Mosasaur Tooth, ooh, I didn't know about that. Alpha Raptor Claw, got plenty of them. An Alpha Tuso Eye, and an Alpha Tyrannosaur Tooth. Oh, it looks like we got our work cut out for us. After we leave the volcano, I then decide to fly into Redwood, because we need to find one of these. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it, but this time I did that on purpose. Yeah, so it turns out we actually need to kill a few of these so we can get their hook claws. Ah, there you are. Thank you. Oh, oh I didn't see him. Yes. 
day 125 i went to the tributes vault to check what tributes we needed compared to what tributes we already had i then went to the blue obelisk to create some more cryopods i then went back to the base to cryopod some unneeded dinosaurs look the place is getting a little bit crowded we don't need them right now and it's about to get a lot more crowded once we start breeding completely i then wanted a high level rex just to myself to be able to use it around the base so i put an egg down but we have more important things to worry about right now and that is gathering tributes so we left the base just before night and started hunting down some spinos i feel like everything's easy to kill in this rex day 126 and we continued our hunt for these spino sails but then i remembered we put that egg down earlier so we had to jet back to base to check on it once i arrived back at base i realized it was gone i don't really know what happened i think it glitched underneath the foundation so i built this next layer and then put another egg down then back out to track down some more tributes like these uteranosaurus lungs and these allosaurus brains later on that day i made a pretty big rookie error I didn't even know how I did that. Freaking hell. It's morning of day 127 and our baby Rex has hatched. So we name him Cake, cause who doesn't like cake? Then it was time for us to head on into the ocean once again. This time we're on the hunt for the all elusive Tuso. Well, I'm just gonna call it Squid cause I can't say its real name. We searched for a long time. And I mean a really long time. Well, it felt like a long time. Nah, it was definitely a long time until finally we spotted one can you see it here i'll show you we found a squid luckily it was a low level so we got to make some quick calamari i won't lie i was expecting him to be a lot harder than this but then something else happened don't tell me oh brr. yeah we didn't get the tentacles that we needed for the tributes and yes, we looked around for a bag before you say anything in the comments. Tell me there's a bag somewhere. Please. Luckily for us, quite close by, there was another squid. They made it grab me. Usually the strat for killing these is to be on a Basilosaurus because Tusos can actually grab you off your mount. But if you're on a Basilosaurus, they can't grab you off your mount. So because I was on the Baryonyx, I had to make sure I stayed away from its tentacles the whole time. It took us a little bit, but we got the job done. <gasps> yes! Day 128, we took a quick trip back to base so we could pick up our Basilosaurus and repair our scuba tank. Then straight back into the ocean we go. And we got really, really lucky. Only a short time into our trip and we run straight into an Alpha Mosasaur. Uh, Alpha Mosasaur. I'm pretty sure we need that too. If you couldn't tell already, when I'm on Indiana Jones, I'm a pretty confident guy. But this time I wanted to make my life a little bit easier. So I made a bit of distance between myself and the Alpha Mosasaur. I can just kind of weave around here and went to get our Basilosaurus out. But then this happened. Keep an eye on the Mosasaur. Yeah, it freaking disappeared. I thought it just went out of render, but no, it actually disappeared. We tried looking for it for ages. With no luck, it was time to put the Basilosaurus away and continue our search. Day 129 and we're still in the ocean, but this time we finally found another Alpha Mosasaur. This one was a low level and our Baryonyx Indiana Jones is such a beast doing 2k damage each hit. We finally killed it and its bag dropped on the ocean floor. So I went down to collect my treasures and then this happened. This was not good and it was starting to look like a very sticky situation. Yeah, they just broke our scuba tank. Luckily for us, we got on our baryonyx and we made a quick escape. We make it out of the ocean so we can get some fresh air. But now it looks like we're going to die because of the cold. Do you mean to tell me after all of that? I'm about to die because of the cold. We race back to the base as fast as we can. But our health keeps dropping. I don't think we're going to make it. Do we make it back to base or do we not?
That was so tense. Honestly, we were so lucky to have such an amazing dinosaur in Indiana Jones here. Baryonyx is a seriously underrated. Anyway, later on that day, we went back into the lava cave so we could try and find some megalania toxins. We didn't find anything, but we did get the artifact. Day 130, we yet again find ourselves at another cave. Again, trying to find some megalania toxin. We come back empty handed, but we do grab the artifact. So that's a win in my eyes. After leaving the cave, we started to wander around and explore a little bit. And then we saw this in the distance. I completely forgot about him. Day 131 and we build a tree platform at Redwoods, mainly for the purpose of collecting sap because sap is a pretty useful resource in the end game. Then back to a cave we go because this time we have to be able to find a megalania. There's always a megalania in this one spot every single time we enter this cave and there should be a megalania right, right here. There usually is one right here. Where is it? Once again, we come out empty handed, but we do grab the artifact. Day 132 and we now have all three artifacts for the Broodmother boss. So we create some pedestals and put them down so we can show off our achievements. But we all know how much better they look at night. After checking the tributes vault, we then realize that we have enough to be able to take on the Broodmother. We can actually run the Broodmother now, but we don't quite have enough Megatheriums yet. So I guess it's time to get breeding. So yeah, day 133, we started breeding our Megatheriums. There's our baby! And damn, they make cute babies. We then went and found these three Listosauruses because when you pet a Listosaurus at your base, all the dinosaurs around it gain experience without doing anything. Later on that day, we went out to the snow and we spotted another Giga, but it was a level 108 and we all know what happened last time. I think I'm dead. Yeah, so I think you can understand why I don't want to take on a 108 giga. So for the moment, we leave it be and head on back to base to look after our babies. I think for now, I'd rather cuddle a baby Megatherium than take on a level 108 Gigasaurus. Day 134 and there was this Dodicarus right near our base. So we had to tame it. It wasn't a high level, but we're only going to use it to smash some stone anyway. Later that day, a very sad thing happened. I forgot about one of the little ones being born. So it was born and yeah. Day 135 and our Dodicarus was ready to be tamed. Then I put a saddle on it and then I just left it there and didn't use it at all. I don't know why we didn't use it. We also found a high level Dodo. Well, level 92, which is the highest I've found in a very long time. So we tamed it and went ahead and named him Killer. Later on in the afternoon, we saw in the distance right by Herbivore Island, a big white whale but it wasn't just a normal one. Oh, that's the alpha version this was so lucky because they drop a tribute that we need for the alpha overseer unfortunately we had our baryonyx on us indiana jones uh indiana jones it's time for you to work your magic Look, for an alpha, I figured he was going to be a lot harder than that. But we got what I needed. So now it's on to day 136. And we finally, after a very long time, found ourselves a high level Therizino. 112, baby. So I build a simple pillar trap and then I lure it into the trap. But uh, it gets out. But for some strange reason, it goes back to the pillar trap and starts attacking it. So we take advantage of that and then knock it out. Yes. I then place some spike walls around it just to keep it safe and then head on back to base. Day 137, we spend literally the entire day making sure that this Therizino stays knocked out. After all, this Therizino is gonna be a massive game changer for our breeding. Day 138 and it's time to wake up Sleeping Beauty with true love's first kiss or a carrot or something. Yeah, we finally took the Dodicarus out to smash some rocks. It's actually really fun and therapeutic. Oh yeah, and with that Therizina earlier, well, we actually brought it back to base and started breeding it and now it's laid some eggs. So now we can start growing our Therizino army. Day 139 and we took our Megatherium out to see what it can do. The best thing about attacking these scorpions is because they're insects, it triggers a Megatherium's buff. So this Megatherium is about to go ham on all these dinos. Just another day in the office. Back at base and we hatched our Therizinos. We're trying to find one that we can use as a breeder. And we did. So we called it Breed F. 
Day 140 and we get the Daedon to start healing up all our dinos. It's important that they're at tip top shape in order to fight the Broodmother. Once we have a few of our Megatheriums at full health, we fly on over to the Green Obelisk and drop off some of our Megatheriums. It doesn't matter that they get cryostic, we won't be back until they're up anyway. And if it wasn't obvious, I always take them up for a run so they can get some more levels and making sure I imprint them every chance I get. Day 141 and we're back in the easy cave again, but this time we finally get ourselves a Megalania. I'm pretty sure Ark has a thing that if you're looking for a dinosaur, you'll never find it. But if you're not looking for it, it'll be everywhere. So now we can return back to base in peace and add Megalania toxins to our collection. In other news, later on that day, our Megatherium had twins that will grow up big and strong to fight a spider. Day 142 and we started breeding our new female Therizino with our old male Therizino. Yes, they are father and daughter, but in this world, it's completely normal, okay? After all, love is love. We then noticed this Sabertooth was trying to get some milk out of the Triceratops. It was a pretty weird sight, so I tranquilized him and put him to sleep. Day 143 was pretty boring. I spent most of the day just staring at Slash's ass because we had to wait for these Megatheriums to either grow up or heal. Oh, but the Sabretooth did wake up and uh, decided to join us. So we named him Diego. You know, like the guy from Ice Age. Day 144, and we decided to take our T-Rex for a swim and then head over to the Green Obelisk so we could drop off our Daedon and our Uteranosaurus. Day 145 and we find ourselves back in the ocean again and we run into this fierce creature, the Alpha Mosasaur. But we lay down a flurry of chomp chomp chomps and it's a goodbye Alpha Mosasaur. We continue our search along the ocean and then bang out of nowhere an Alpha Tuso. Game time baby. The strategy was quite simple. I needed to create distance so it would charge after me head first so I didn't get tangled up in its tentacles. One of the most annoying things was all the extra dinosaurs that were around us. We eventually sorted them out though. You guys are mad annoying. And then we could focus purely on the Alpha Tuso. He was looking kind of bloody, so I figured we had him. <gasps> I won't lie, I thought the Tuso grabbed us. We then collected everything we needed from the bag that the Tuso dropped. Day 146 and I collect this Therizino egg. Then I go on a meat run with my T-Rex. Then I literally stand in the middle of our base and wait for time to pass. And then it's day 147 and we find a level 104 Dodo. Finally a decent level Dodo. So we tame it. Now you're probably thinking, why doesn't he just go ahead and do the Broodmother boss? Well, it's not that simple, okay? If you see here, this Megatherium's health is too low. This one as well. So yes, we need to wait for them to heal up completely, which can take a bit of time, even with Daedons. Day 148, and I invent a new game. We call it Dino Tag. It's where I run up to a wild dino and punch it. Tag, you're it. And then the dino has to chase me down and catch me. Look, this Enki was never going to catch me. But then the hyenas saw me and they wanted to play too. You can't catch me, can't catch me. Oh, stepped him. Yeah, yeah. T-Rex time. <laughs> now they're frozen in place. <laughs> yeah, walk away. And what? Day 149 and we spent most of the time at the Green Obelisk. We needed to make sure that all of our Megatheriums were fed alongside our Daedon and our Uteranosaurus. Day 149 and on our way back to base, we spot an Alpha Tyrannosaurus. So we quickly go back to base, pick up our favorite T-Rex cake and head on back to fight this fight. Look, I had pretty high expectations when fighting an Alpha Rex, but this one was pretty easy. After all, he's only a level four. Stop, hold up. Once again, we are back at the halfway point. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. And if you want, feel free to follow all my other socials. The links are just down below. And remember, maybe it's a good time to get a drink and maybe get some snacks and enjoy the rest of the video. Day 151. And today is the day that we defeat the Alpha Broodmother. I hope. But we can't just go in there in any normal fit. We gotta be dripped out to the fullest. So I go to the cooking pot and whip up some magical dyes and then the big reveal.
cool. That's kind of badass. I even changed my hair color too. Now that we're all dripped out in our battle attire, it's time to fly over to the green obelisk and start the arena. Once we get to the green obelisk, I gotta make sure that my U-Tyrannosaurus is dripped out too. Oh, that's cool. Then we make our final checks on the rest of the dinos and start the arena. All right, here we go. Okay, stop. I need to explain something real quick. I have no idea what happened, but during the fight, my whistle commands just wasn't working. It was super frustrating, but I'll let you watch and you can see what happens. Why isn't everybody rushing? What is happening right now? I went to the I went to the control panel to double check the key bindings for the commands that I needed. But it still wasn't working. So I courage roll the only dinosaur that was fighting, but he was doing some damage. The one Megatherium is burning him though. The rest are just sitting there doing freaking nothing. It works when I single whistle them individually. Then I have to jump off my UD and change their statuses to aggressive just to get them into the fight. It's starting to look a little bit more promising. We've got some more Megatheriums into the fight and the boss's health is starting to look pretty low. On my U-Tyrannosaurus, I let out one last courage roar and let it play out as it should. I won't lie, in the beginning, I wasn't confident we were going to win that. After all that, I think our Megatheriums deserve a good break. Well, some of them, some of them don't deserve anything because they didn't even help. And once we get back to base, we hang up our trophy in pride. Look at that. I think it looks pretty cool in red. It matches my new fit. Day 152 and we are not playing around. We're straight preparing for the monkey right now. And yes, I said we were going to take in Rexes. So here are 1560, I don't know, a crazy number of Rex eggs. I then fly up to the blue obelisk to double check what artifacts we're going to need and tributes. Now I do already have the artifacts that I gathered from the 100 days video, but I think we need a couple more tributes. But we don't have time for that, do we now, pig? No, because we need to hatch these Rex eggs. So on day 153, we spend the entire day all the way through the night into the morning of day 154 staring at Rex eggs. Yeah, it, it was exhilarating but it was worth it because we did get to witness them all hatch all together now that they're all hatched i guess it's time for us to spread them out around the base you go there you go there and uh nah, who cares you just go wherever day 155 and do you remember that giga that we saw earlier that level 108 yeah today we're gonna kill it so we already have a Rex and a Baryonyx waiting for us. All we need to do is get Cake out and start the attack. It was pretty awkward being that we're on the side of the mountain. Even the other Rex got yeeted down the mountain. Eventually, we just started chomp, chomp, chomping in this 2v1 and secured that dub. And yes, before you say anything in the comments, I would have loved to have tamed this, but I really need the Giga Hut. It's way more important. Days 156 and day 157, we spent the entire time raising our T-Rexes. And it wasn't until day 158 that they became fully grown. So I whacked the saddle on them and took them to go gain some levels. The best way we know how. That one run alone gained us 9 levels. Day 159 and now since our Rexes are taken care of, it's time for us to go get the rest of the tributes in order to be able to summon the Alpha Megapithecus. So we need Megalania toxins still. And there's only 4 locations that I know of that you can find a Megalania. And they're all in caves. So we check out the first easy cave. And there was no Megalania in its normal spot or anywhere in the entire cave. So we left and then we flew over to the lava cave. And we searched everywhere and still nothing again. So we left and back to the drawing board. Day 160 and we flew over to the swamp cave that's in Redwoods. And we needed to go here anyway because the artifact of the immune is in here that we need to be able to summon the alpha dragon. There is one thing about this cave though. If you're not wearing a gas mask, you get hurt. So we got our gas mask on 
and a baryonyx out and we're looking flyer than all the bugs in here and can i tell you there's a lot of bugs in here just watch the screen when this happens yeah that's all bugs we head deeper into the cave and then we see this red cave drop so we collect it but it looks like someone wants to hitch a ride with us yeah that's a leech we continue on and then collect the artifact of the immune and then we head out with this mother sucker the leech and there's only one real way to get rid of these you gotta walk into an open fire day 161 and i spent the entire day feeding the t-rexes and gaining levels on them all one by one by one day 162 and i took whatever rexes we had that were ready up to the obelisk to join our daydon and our yudi day 163 and our base got visited by a megalodon and then visited by a white t-rex I think he was jealous of the green ones. He didn't stay long. We then flew over to the icebergs so we could go visit these little penguins. They're so little and so cute. It's a shame, really. I really need organic polymer and there's only one way to get it. Now, since we gathered all that organic polymer, today, day 164, we can now make a full ghillie suit, which we plan to use so we can go get ourselves a giant bee, which will then turn into a beehive. Now, the key to getting a giant bee is to destroy the beehive that you can find in redwoods on trees or around the map on the sides of rocks and whatnot. I was out there for ages trying to get a giant bee to spawn, but none would spawn after I destroyed the beehive. So on day 165, I resorted to the only option I had. We're just going to have to gather honey the old school way, and that's by hand. Usually it's better to have a beehive at your base so you can create honey whenever you want, but you can always collect it in the wild. Now you're probably wondering, what's his obsession with this honey? Well, let's gather some sap from our sap farm and get back to base and I'll tell you. Well, you see, sap and honey are the main ingredient in making vegetable cakes. So we load the honey and the sap into the industrial cooker. Oh yeah, if I didn't mention, we now have an industrial cooker. And the rest of the ingredients that are basically from the crops that we planted earlier, and it automatically makes vegetable cake. And vegetable cake, when you feed to a herbivore like a Therizino, they instantly gain 500 health. Day 166 and we went back to the blue obby to drop off some more T-Rexes. We were quickly reminded that we still need Megalania Toxin to be able to get into the boss fight. So we flew over to the last cave that has a Megalania in it. But once we got there, I made a pretty monumental mistake. Look, a lot was happening and I threw out Indiana Jones with cryo sickness. There were so many dinos, but I tried to fight them all off. We got most of them, but this Kano wouldn't leave Indiana Jones alone. And then... Yeah. No! Oh, freaking hell. Oh, no. I'm so sorry, Indiana Jones. Look, mistakes were made. It's time to fly home and grieve our good friend. It's now day 167 and we mourn our loss of Indiana Jones. I've written a little poem for him. Indiana Jones was our friend. Oh why, oh why did this have to end? He was great in the land or the sea. Why did this have to be? Cryo sickness is where he met his end. But it's okay, we could just breed more and they can be our friend. On that note, we just grab another baryonyx straight out of the vault, but we name this one Cave with a K, because we're creative like that. And back to the cave we go to be able to get this Megalania toxin. It's a race down to the bottom, but we finally get not one, but two Megalanias that both drop Megalania toxin. Day 168 and day 169, I spent the entire time leveling up the rest of our T-Rexes. Day 170, we're just about to go into the monkey fight, but we need a couple of Rexes just to get their health up a little bit more. So while we wait, I went out and I found a Giga. Once we killed it, we could then claim its heart for a tribute for the Alpha Dragon boss. Guys, it's now day 171, and today's the day we fight the big ass monkey. Our Rexes are ready to go, our pigs ready to go, our Yudi's ready to go. So let's go. Now that we're in the arena, it's go time. And the strategy for this is very simple, actually. You want to get the monkey's attention and bring him back to exactly where you spawn into. You don't want to fight him up in his arena. And be careful, he's pretty quick. I quickly race back, jump on my UD, and then start whistling attack because he is pumping us and doing some big damage. It takes a little bit, but they start to attack him, and then we start doing some damage. And for some reason, I dismounted the UD and then lost him. Where's my UD? So I decided to jump on any Rex I could find, 
Just so I could avoid damage myself. Mistakes were made. Thankfully, we were doing a ton of damage. And then it was over just like that. GG, monkey man. Yeah, red on red on red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After securing this victory, we need to go mount our trophy on the wall. So we do, and we bask in its ambience. Okay, the fun's now over. It's time to get down to business. So like I said, in order for us to take on the Alpha Dragon, we're going to go in with a Therizino army. So it's time to raise such an army. And that night they started to hatch and they were looking good and healthy. Day 172 and day 173, I spent the entire time looking after and raising these babies. It was more important this time to get the imprinting bonus on these Therizinos because their parents were a lot lower level than we wanted it to be. Day 174 and I'm getting quite bored of raising these Therizinos, but I also know that there's a quick cave that we can run that is pretty close by too. So we hop in our bird and fly straight over there. It's just in the snow biome, just around the back of the blue obelisk. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too tight for us to be able to use our baryonics in it. So we've got to run it all on foot. It's not too hard. There's only two kind of dangers in this, and that's bats and random places that you can just drop off the face of the earth. The cave in itself is kind of pretty though. Now there is a strategy that I like to use for this one. And then it's just to pull one bat at a time, kill it and move on to the next one and next one. Being patient is very important in this. One thing I do love about Ark is sometimes the cave dinosaurs are bugged and they won't attack you. Other times, they want to rip your face off. After making it through this maze of a cave, we finally grab the artifact and then hightail it straight out of there. On the way out, I got lost and almost fell down these three different drops. We finally found the exit and flew straight back to base. Day 175 and we're back to looking after these Therizinos, but some of them are now fully grown. So it's straight to getting some levels into them we go. And the best way to do that, kill out the dinosaurs. Day 176, we quickly went up the mountain and did a quick metal run. After flying back down to base, I decided we needed a little bit more stone too, just to stock up on some more resources. Day 177, and yes, again, we were looking after the Therizinos at the base. So let's just skip this day because day 178 was quite an exciting day. We had to do an underwater cave. Now I watched a couple of tutorials on this one, and this one's really simple if you just stick to the way that it needs to be done. And that's sticking to the right of the wall, finding this hole and getting straight into it and avoiding any unnecessary fights. We get to the artifact room, collect our prize and hightail it straight out of there day 179 and i started to feel a little bit sad about indiana jones so i decided to make another one it didn't take long but he hatched later that day i didn't name him i couldn't think of anything good for him day 180 we spent around the base again so let's skip to day 181 because we still needed some tributes for the alpha dragon boss we needed some ud lungs and some allosaurus brains so we hopped on our wrecks and went into the snow biome fortunately while we we're in the snow biome we did collect a few ud lungs we didn't quite have enough yet until day 182, where we ran into these Allosauruses, exactly what we need right now. And the final UD lung that we needed. Day 183, and we venture into what is possibly the hardest cave on the entire island. The cave that holds the artifact of the strong. One of the first parts of this cave is you have to crawl underneath this ice ledge. I straight away notice that there's dinos right there, so I get the baryonyx straight out. We're lucky that there's lots of fish in here because I have to heal this baryonyx heaps. The thing that makes this cave quite hard is there's lots of high level dinos and it feels like it goes on forever. There are some pretty good cave drops though, but they are coupled up with some pretty creepy things. We finally get to the artifact and I think it's pretty cool that it's next to this gorilla statue thing. We then collect it and then we head on out. I didn't even realize, but we were in that cave for so long, it's now day 184. And we are basically ready to take on the Alpha Dragon. So it's time that we cryo up these Therizinos and take them over to the Obelisk. Day 185 and we just finalized the last bit of our prep work for the Alpha Dragon boss fight. That night we admired our trophies, but we knew something was missing. 
we needed that dragon head too. So on day 186, it was time for us to go to the Alpha Dragon Arena. But if I'm honest, I was quite nervous. We had a lot riding on this. Bro, I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> All of our tributes are in. So let's go. Whew. Oh crap. Actually shitting myself. There's the dragon. Okay, so the strategy for defeating the dragon is quite simple as well. And knowing your whistle commands is super important. The dragon's gonna shoot a fireball at you and you're gonna wanna try and make your Therizinos dodge it. Ooh. When that happens, all the Pteranodons are gonna come in and they're gonna attack you aggressively. obviously try and take them out the dangerous things to watch out for are the dimorphodons because they actually attack you not your dinosaurs then you're going to want to wait for the dragon to land and then send in all your therizinos to attack it all at once don't forget the courage roll while you're on your uti come on boy the alpha dragon does a crap load of damage, so I did lose a couple there as Enos. One there is Enos down. Come on, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Now the there is Enos been killed. Another one. It was safe to say that my heart was racing pretty hard right now. Yes. Yes! Come on! We got this! Yes! 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 yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I didn't think we were gonna do that! Oh, my heart is racing! <laughs> Crap! Ooh! If only you can see my hands right now, my hands are shaking. I had to take a second and take in this moment. It looked pretty cool standing within his mouth. And my flat got destroyed. I'm not naked on purpose. Day 187, and we finally added our final boss trophy to our collection. But our story's not over yet. We still need to take on the Overseer, which is a total different ball game. So we fly up to the volcano to the Overseer's lair, and we double check that we have all the tributes that we need. And we do. So we head on to the other obelisk, and we select some dinosaurs to come with us. I figured this time we're gonna just take a mix of all the dinosaurs we took to all the bosses. The first dinosaur we definitely had to take was our T-Rex cake. Where's cake? Cake. Cake. Cake, cake. You're coming with me. Later that night, we started to drop them off at the volcano. Day 188 and day 189, I spent the entire time selecting the right dinosaurs to come into the overseer's lair with me. Now you see, before you even see the Overseer, you've actually got to make it through a ton of T-Rexes, Gigas, Allosauruses, and other high level dinosaurs. And I mean really high, they're like level 400 plus. So when preparing for this, I had to make sure the dinosaurs I took in with me were the right ones for the task. It's now day 190, and the last 90 days have been leading up to this very moment. Once we open that gate, there's no turning back. So here goes nothing. I'm not gonna lie, I was again super nervous and a lot of mistakes were made in this. The first one straight away. I whistled all of them to follow me in and they didn't come through. They were stuck in the entrance because the entry was so tight. So I spent what little time I had trying to get them all in one by one by one. Unfortunately, it only looks like we got 12 dinosaurs in. I'm not actually sure how many we had out there. And I realize now we were allowed up to 50. I didn't actually know that before this. Having whistled the dinos follow all, it was a little bit messy and a little bit dangerous with the lava so close. Our first major hiccup was when we saw our first enemies. A lot of our dinos decided to jump off the side into the lava rather than fight our enemies. They did do a lot of damage though. We were progressing through the cave quite nicely, but our numbers were starting to dwindle a little bit. Seeing death notices at the top of the screen was quite unsettling. It was around about here that I realized I think we bit off a little bit more than we could chew. Level 496 dinosaurs? 
Ugh. We were pretty much out of options, and I started to notice that my health was starting to drain as well. Oh no, what are we gonna do? My health's draining too. And there was only me, the UD, and two Therizinos. There was only one thing we could do, and YOLO it through the rest of the cave. I just tried to race past every dinosaur that we could see. We even escaped that Giga. Until it got to this moment. And yeah. Oh, yeah it was no. pretty much all over from here. Rip. See, this is me, fam. I ain't gonna make it past this. Oh. Goodbye. Did it push me in? Are you going for it? Oh. Wait. Nah. So this is a fat rip, guys. I won't make it past this. I just gotta run for it. Stuff it. There's something behind me. Oh crap! Wow. I don't know what to do. That's it. That's it. Oh my gosh. <sighs> So yes, it's over. We didn't defeat the Overseer, but the story doesn't quite end there. Later, soon hopefully, I'm going to upload an alternative ending. You see, I actually opened up an old save and have recorded a different ending. One where we did all the things we probably should have done this round. Like you might see a tech replicator and you might see a fly ass tech suit. So make sure you subscribe and keep the bell notifications on so you can see when that video goes live. Until next time, peace. Yeah. Go to sleep. Make Ethereum. Go to sleep. Make Ethereum.